When I returned home, uh, you know, I wasn't I wasn't myself, you know. I was like a different person altogether, you know, because it's it's what the army does to you, you know what I mean? It just just changed your whole perspective, yeah. Changed your whole life, boy. It's something you, you never forget. I was, I was enlisted 1A, and I got, I got drafted uh, in 1950, and I, uh, inducted, I was inducted at Fort Meade, Maryland. And I stayed at Fort Meade, Maryland for about a month. Then I left uh, Fort Meade, Maryland, and went to Camp Breckenridge with the 1st Airborne Division. So one, one thing about it, you got good training. The, the only time they, they only get back they only gave you 14 weeks when I went in. So our troop was scheduled to go to Korea, the terrain and everything. They teach you, you know, the thing that in Korea, like like a combat, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I had 14 weeks of basic. Then I, I then I got signed to Korea, you know, and I had seven days home that day. So I, I spent seven days home. Then I. Went and lived, and then I took a troop train to Chicago, and from Chicago to Seattle, Washington. And I stayed in Seattle, Washington, about three weeks. And uh, after the three weeks, I was shipped off to Japan, Yokohama, Japan. And I stayed in Japan for a while. It was at the First Cavalry Division. Then after the, the Yokohama, I got to. Uh, shipped out to Incheon, uh, Korea. And then from Incheon, and I took a troop train to Seoul, Seoul, Korea. That was with the 3rd Division, Army Division. And I stayed there for a while before I went on the front line. It was like a, a cold climate, you know. When we first went there, did they, uh, Give, they, we, they had shoe packs, and which that wasn't right, you know. And then after that, guy wound up with uh, trench feet. You ever, you ever see a guy take a pair of pliers and pull his toes off? That was the shoe packs that they had before, the, because the army wasn't ready for that type of weather, you know. Then after the shoe pack, they invented a thing called uh, the boots, which, which kept your feet warm. You had to change your socks by practically every day, you know. That would it broke up the uh, thing from getting your foot uh, frostbitten, you know. But if you got your foot frostbitten, boy, you can just take a pair of pliers and pull your toes off. The two automatics that we had were the M1 and M2 carbine. That was a 45 weapon. And uh, I was with the uh, the 30 caliber machine gun. It was a heavy, what you call a heavy weapon squad. And I was with that. And I was uh, I first started out as an ammo barrel. I wasn't I wasn't the one that uh, with the machine gun. I carried the most ammo. The heavy weapon consists of a carbine, a M116 plus a 30 caliber weapon and a, and a 50 caliber weapon. So when you're in the army, you learn to assemble them blindfolded, you know, because you never know when you're going to need it. Most of you did patrol at night. Yeah, at night, you mostly patrol. Then most of during the day, you had artillery coming in, you know. We had the bunkers that we was in, sandbags. We had about four or five layers of sandbags. And so when, once the artillery hit the you know, sandbags, you know, it didn't affect us. The 25th Division was all black, you know. But uh, I was with the 3rd Army. You know, with with uh, 
The third division it consists of the third, 65th, and the seventh. But I was with the third division, like uh, a blue patch, you know. And uh, the 65th was all Puerto Ricans. And then they start mixing us up, the 65th. And most, mo most of them didn't speak English, you know what I mean? And it, it was tough when you, especially when you go out on patrol or something like that. He's speaking Spanish, and you English, you know, you don't understand them. But one thing about it, they had where you could, that was numbers that you had to memorize anything that, that take place. And my first uh, assignment was in a little hill called, it was uh, 355. And uh, I was on that for a good while. And uh, most of the career was like high ground, you know. The one that has the higher uh, uh, ground, you know, they, 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 they fight for that, that hill itself, you know. So that, that's the way most of them was getting killed like that. Then one thing about it, you have a like a, a forward, thing for, for like artillery coming in on you, you have like a forward observer, and, and they can tell you know if they spot anything, they can see where the artillery will go. I had a couple of good friends over from Chicago. Yeah, to, to a couple of Irish brothers, boy, I tell you, uh, they was really, I don't know if they still live in the day, you know. We, 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 see, one thing, one thing about it, when you're an army, you, you live as one. And when something happened to one, it happened to everybody, you know. It was just, yeah, boy, oh boy. And just that was 58 years ago. So I, three or four of my buddies got brainwashed. It, it, they, held, they held captive, you know. And they came back and they told me they were how, how, they, how did North Korea brainwash them? It's really something. you can't get over, you know, it's, it's really, really affected. And you see the people to get killed uh, among you, you know, and the high God has spared my life to come back to the States, you know. But I wasn't a Christian then, you know. But I was raised as, you know, I, brought, I was brought up, I was living on my parents' experience, you know. Then I met my wife, you know, and, and uh, that's, that's really when I became a Christian, you know. Then after I came back, they gave you, the veterans gave you what, like a, a reward. I, I, have a re, I had a reward of about $500, you know. <laughs> Something that, that, that was what the state gave you. One thing about it, I thank God, you know, for bringing me back. And uh, I promised the Lord everything, boy, when, when, when I was over there. But when I came back, I was back in the world again, you know. But it was something that takes that other half away from you, you know, within, within yourself.
October 11th, 2008. My name is Gabriella Sassador, and I'm a student at LaSalle University. I will be interviewing Mr. James Fant, who was a corporal in the United States Army um, during the Korean War. Um, this is all taking place at the Union League building of Philadelphia, and my camera person today will be Eric Donovan. And I think that's it. <laughs> you want me Ready to get my serial number? Mm -hmm. My serial number when I first went in? Sure. I'm in the, the US 52 116894. That was my name. I was born in the South, yeah, 1929, 1218-129, and I moved to Philadelphia in my in an early age. Mm -hmm. Then I, I wor worked, you know, until I came of age, you know, and again, I got drafted. I was enlisted 1A. And I was drafted in 1950. Mm -hmm. So what were you doing right before you entered? The I, I was working in a restaurant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In Philadelphia. Yeah, yes, Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Now, when you were drafted, um, can you just tell me about the day? How did you feel when you were? Oh. Were you expecting it? Was this? I was. I was listed one A, and I got, I got drafted uh, in 1950. And I, uh, induct, I was ducked at Fort Meade, Maryland. And I stayed at Fort Meade, Maryland for about a month. Then I left uh, Fort Meade, Maryland and went to Camp Breckenridge by troop train. Mm -hmm. And I had 14 weeks of basic. And uh, 14 weeks of basic at the f f f Breckenridge, Kentucky. And uh, that was the first airborne division, you know. Mm -hmm. And then I had 14 weeks of basic, then I, I, then I got signed to Korea, you know, and I had seven days home that day. So I, I spent seven days home, then I went and lived, and then I took a troop train to Chicago, and from Chicago to Seattle, Washington. And I stayed in Seattle, Washington about three weeks. And uh, after the three weeks, I was shipped off to Japan, Yokohama, Japan. And I stayed in Japan for a while. The, it was the, at the 1st Cavalry Division. The 1st Cavalry couldn't come back to the States because they had lost their colors, you know. And I stayed in uh, Yokohama for about, I was in Yokohama about a month, I guess. Then after the, the Yokohama, I got uh, sh sh shipped out to a troop train to, oh, let me see what's the name, Incheon, Incheon, uh, Korea. And then from Incheon, and I took a troop train to Seoul, Seoul, Korea. That was with the 3rd Division, Army Division. And I stayed there for a while before I went on the front line. And that, that was between, and I, ooh, it was in December. That was Bob Hope, James Russell, back in them days, you know. And uh, after the, after that, I got shipped out to Korea, and I I stay I went to Incheon, and after Incheon, I went on the battlefield, and I went to a little. That was fighting for high ground, and, and my first uh, assignment was in a little hill called it was. Uh, 355, and uh, I was on that for a good while. And uh, mostly Korea was like high ground, you know, fighting for high ground. And I was on quite a, quite a few of them, you know, and all the rice paddies and whatnot, you know. And, and uh, any particular thing that you? Oh no! How was it? Just you know, going into training. 
Was it hard to adapt to get into it, that? It, it, it was really hard because I was young and, you know, about 18 years old, you know what I mean? Left home and, you know, you ever seen a man cry when we were on the battlefield, you know? And it was, it was pretty tough. I had uh, 15 months in Korea. Mm -hmm. And after that, I, I got rotated back to Sasebo, Japan. Just after I spent all that time in Korea. Then I got back to, after that, I lost a lot of buddies, you know? And uh, I thank God that I got saved, you know? And just before I got rotated back, they invaded the hill that I was on. That was that 355, you know. And I lost a lot of friends, a lot of buddies. And I thank God that I came back, you know. And, uh, and after that, I got shipped back to the behind the lines, you know. And I stayed behind the lines for a while. And then I got rotated back to the States. And I got back to San Francisco, and uh, that's where I departed when I got back to the States. And I stayed in the San Francisco for about three weeks. Then, got wrote, and got, then I left there. Then I got shipped to Indian Town Gap. That's where I got discharged at Indian Town Gap, Pennsylvania. And I stayed at Indian Town Gap for about a month and a half before I got discharged. And, uh, after that, after I got discharged, I went went to work and I uh, I planned a job at uh, the old PTC, except to now, that's what they was making the railroad cars and everything. So I stayed there for about three years, and after that I got laid off, you know, and I got laid off from there, and after I got laid off. I had a a friend that knew somebody, you know, uh, within the automobile business, and so he gave me an address and bang, I, and a, a name of a person. And that this name of the of the of the person gave me gave me a job. That was a like a Chevrolet company, you know, and I stayed there for about 13 years, you know, and after that. I got, I left there, the boss didn't want me to leave, but I got to help the General Motors. And I was at General Motors for about 35 years, you know. And, I, and after 35 years, I retired, you know. And, uh, I retired, for, been retired now for about 12 years. Mm -hmm. How has um, being in the war affected the rest of your life? Oh, it's uh, it's something you you can't get over, you know. It's, it's really really affected, and you see the people to get killed uh, among you, you know, and the high God has spared my life to come back to the states, you know. But I wasn't a Christian then, you know. But I was raised as I brought I was brought up. I was living on my parents' experience, you know. Then I met my wife, you know. And, and uh, that's w that's really when I became a Christian, you know. And, and uh, let's see, anything but else particular? Sure. Um, do you have? Do you want to talk about maybe any of the relationships you made while you were in the army, or maybe? Oh yeah, maybe I heard. Some if there was any good times or any particular... Oh, oh yeah, that, 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 that were, there were good times while I was in Korea. And after you in Korea for a while, you know, but I was married at the time. I'm not going to tell my wife. <laughs> These are things I did when I was married, you know. Then you get a... After about four or five months, you get shipped back to Japan, you know. But I got shipped back to a little town called Kakura. Japan for R and R. I stayed there for about two weeks. They they, they take you offline to, to something just to keep the tension off of you. And then I got got shipped back on that line. There was a little hill called three five five. 
that's the, that's the one that really had more artillery work on it, you know. And uh, but it was it was something experience that you never you never forget. It just, it stays in you, you know. Watching your buddies pass, it really is something. Oh yeah, I was, I was with a heavy weapon squad. The heavy weapon consists of a carbine, an M116, plus a 30 caliber weapon and a, and a 50 caliber weapon. So when you're in the army, you learn to assemble them blindfolded, you know, because you never know when you're going to need it. You kept them clean and everything. But the, the one thing about it, now they got these uh, automatic, the, the, the two automatics that we had were the M1 and M2 carbine. That was the 45 weapon. And uh, the, I was with the, uh, the 30 caliber machine gun. It was a heavy, what you call a heavy weapon squad. And I was with that. And I was, uh, I first started out as an ammo barrel. I wasn't, I wasn't the one that, uh, with the machine gun, I carried the most ammo for, for the ones. And I had the tension of loading it when we needed it, you know. Then at night, we could usually go on patrol. You know, from the hill, we go so far out on patrol. And then uh, sometimes you make contact and sometimes you don't, you know. But one thing about it, you had to know the password when you come in and out. If you didn't know the password, it was just when the guy could just blast you over. So you had to know the password when you come back, you know, off of patrol. But it, it's something you, you never forget. As a matter of fact, it's still going on and they haven't solved it today. North Korea and South Korea, you know, it's still, still going on. Then mostly, mostly, some of our brothers got captured, and they brainwash you, you know. So I, three or four of my brothers got brainwashed. Did you see them after they were released? Yeah, oh, they held, they held captive, you know. And they came back, and they told me they were how how did how did North Korea brainwash them? It's really something. So um, one, one thing I remember, one thing about it, when I got over there, it probably would have been over. Then I was President Truman, was the president, and Jim, and, uh, MacArthur was in charge. But see, Mac, it would have been over if MacArthur, he hadn't have dismissed MacArthur. They'd have went, with MacArthur, he probably went into China, you know. But I just, uh, it really something. How did you feel when you heard that they had dismissed him? Did, did you want him to stay and finish it? Or did you think that he should have been removed? Or you, or you mean? Uh, yeah. MacArthur. Yeah, it was, it's, it's something you never forget, you know. I have a lot of some, some pictures I, I my wife has, you know. I didn't have, some of them I didn't have because of you know I, over the ages, you know. So I tell you one thing about it, you know. Maybe then after I came back, they gave you the, the veterans gave you what like a a reward. I, I have a re I had a reward of about five hundred dollars, you know, <laughs> something that, that that was what the state gave you. Then after I came back, I didn't go back to my regular job. I got a job at uh, at Bud's company, which they they made P T the L's back in then. But in 1954. You know, I know that you had um, 
mention when I talked to you on the phone that you remember the rice patties and I know you oh, yeah, right, had, yeah. had spoken about how they always remember the weather, how cold it was. Is there any oh, yeah, certain yeah. aspects mm -hmm. that, of Korea that you can still remember now? Oh, yeah, it was like it, it was like a, a cold climate, you know. When we first went there, did they uh, give they we they had shoe packs, in which that wasn't right, you know. And then after that, guys wound up with uh, trench feet. You ever, you ever see a guy take a pair of pliers and pull his toes off? That was the shoe packs that they had before, the, because the army wasn't ready for that type of weather. You know, then after the shoe pack, they invented a thing called uh, the boots, which, which kept your feet warm. You had to change your socks by practically every day. You know, that would it broke up the uh, thing from getting your foot uh, frostbitten. You know, but if you got your foot frostbitten, boy, you can resist. Take a pair of pliers and pull your toes off. You know. I've seen I've seen them, a lot of people did it with the with the first with the shoe packs, and then after they got the those uh, boots, they they took each one and brought them back back a line and gave them a pair of boots to wear. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when I was reading um, <coughs> when we were speaking with other veterans, um, sometimes the Korean War is referred to as like the Forgotten War, because it was in between World War II, and then people often remember Vietnam. What do you have to say about that? Yeah, well, it, it's, it wasn't called a war. It was like a police action. They didn't call it a war. It was a police action. Then uh, Vietnam came, you know. Once Vietnam came, mostly all the, all the people that was uh, wanted to be drafted, they moved in the they didn't want to go in Vietnam. They, most of most of the young people, they went to Canada to deduct the draft. You know, then uh, what you call him came. Cassius Clay came along and Mohammed. You know, and he probably changed the whole situation from Vietnam. You know, but when we went there, I mean, you had to go. You know what I mean? Just you, once they draft you. Like the draft board, you know. And then with your draft board I would say greetings from Uncle Sam. You know, you have been chosen. <laughs> yeah, it was something. You You're right, yeah. Are you anxious or nervous or, or scared? Oh yeah, what well, it, well, it, it is something. So fast. Right, yeah, it was really something. Yeah. So one one thing about it, you got good training. The the only time they they only get back they only gave you 14 weeks when I went in. Then after about three or four years, they rated it to 16 weeks of basic training. Yeah. So I was with the hunting hunt first airborne division in Breckenridge, Kentucky. What was a typical day like during training? Oh, with training, they, they, they teach you everything that you, uh, say our troop was scheduled to go to Korea the terrain and everything they teach you, you know, things that in Korea, like like a combat. Half of my troop went, some of them went to Korea. The ones I went to Korea, then Alaska was one that they they went in the in Germany. Most they broke broke us up. Half went to, they divided us in those groups, and I was with the group that went to Korea, you know. Combat. And I tell you, young people going into combat, but I'm telling you, just it really something. But with the war, with the war today, you know, it's different. The uh, roadside bombs and all they didn't have that back in them days. <coughs> now, the Korean War was the first time in history that the United States had integrated troops. Did you have any experience with that? Uh, no, most of it was segregation, you know. Still? It, it was still back and it was, it was segregated. The 25th Division was all black, you know. But uh, I was with the 3rd Army, you know, with, with uh, the 3rd Division. It consisted of the 3rd, 65th, and the 7th. But I was with the 3rd Division, like uh, a blue patch, you know. And uh, 
the 65th of all Puerto Ricans. And then they start mixing us up, the 65th, and most, most of them didn't speak English, you know what I mean? And it, it was tough when you, especially when you go out on patrol or something like that. He's speaking Spanish, and you English, you know, you don't understand them. But one thing about it, they had where you could, that was numbers that you had to rememorize anything that, that take place. He had his 65th Division, all Puerto Rican. Now, do you guys speak about any of the friends they made? Tell them any stories about them, or? You mean, did, you mean between the Langers Barrier, or what? No, just any friends that you'd made when you went into the Oh, apartment. oh yeah, yeah, we made friends. I, yeah, I had a couple of good friends of, uh, from Chicago. Yeah, to, to a couple of Irish brothers, boy, I tell you, uh, they were really, I don't know if they still live in the day, you know. We, 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 see, one thing, one thing about it, when you are an army, you, you live as one. And when something happened to one, it happened to everybody, you know. It was just, and boy, oh boy. And just, that was 58 years ago, 58. <laughs> But that was that had all the rest patties and everything. Now they got, you know what they got? They got highways, luxury highways and everything now going through there. Yeah, sold career, never good. Now, oh yeah, I was in Young John Po. I was in Young Po as a, as a, as a guard. Tell yeah, that. yeah. Huh. As a, you know, as, as, a, as a guard for a while. Uh, that I remember, that before, I, that was on the way uh, back home, and so I had to do security guard at, at a young dumb po. That was like a, a suburb of Seoul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now were you like watching a tower? Were you actually yeah, well, we're watching the, the yeah, we're watching the prison that they have taken. You know. Yeah. Young dumb po. <laughs> no, we're kidding. Amen. Now were you on patrol overnight or during the day? Was it an hour? Well, well, most of you did patrol at night. Yeah, every night, mostly patrol. Then mostly during the day, you had artillery coming in, you know. We had the bunkers that we was in, sandbags. We had about four or five layers of sandbags. And so once the artillery hit the you know, sandbags, you know, it didn't affect us. It was like digging a hole, you know, around. And then we didn't have hard food. We had sea, we had sea rations, you know. Tell, yeah, me sea, about huh? that. Tell me about that. Yeah, it was sea rations we had. You didn't have a hard food. The only time you got hard food is when they give you a rest and go back in back of the lines. Yeah, them sea rations, but it was something. What were they making? Oh, the only <laughs> the only thing that was likable was baked beans. You know, you could you could heat them up with the. Sterno, sterno, you had to heat it up with sterno. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell me what it was like when you returned home? I beg your pardon? Can you tell me what it was like when you returned home? Oh, when, I, when, I turn, when I returned home, uh, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't myself, you know. I was like a different person altogether, you know. Because it's, it's what the army does to you, you know what I mean? It just it changed your whole perspective. Yeah, it changed your whole life, boy. It's something you, you never forget. Yeah. And I, and even worse now, I'm over in uh, and all the roadside bombings and everything for GI. Hey man, anything else but particular you have? You just call them out and it's fine. Sure. Just um, if there's one thing that you want people to either know about Korea or about your experience, um, what would you just like to get across in the video for the viewers who are going to either watch this on TV or we're also going to have it on the website? Is there any certain message or any mm -hmm. life lesson or just anything that you want, really want people to take away from this? Oh, you mean to to know now? Oh. Yeah, anything 
Oh, well, 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 Tom, since I became a Christian, I did uh, one, one uh, minister, he has a big uh, congregation that Cho is his name. And uh, he has a big congregation in, in Seoul there. And uh, just like uh, he comes back to the state once in a while too, you know. And it's really something. Amen. And most of the people to know, like, right now, you know, it's uh, it just, it's just like New York City, over there and now, you know, same thing. Especially in, in Tokyo, you get Kokura, Tokyo, and Sasebo. All of them. That's that's area of Japan, you know. You, once you come back, you you just like a, a carrier. You carry a, they give you like clothing and stuff. You go and go back. But when you get there, they take all that away from you, you know. So uh, when I got released, I was up at Indian Town Gap. I had service up there for about three, three or four months, you know, before I got discharged. But it was something that takes that other half away from you, you know, within, within yourself. Yeah, 58, 58 years ago, boy, <coughs> really something. Maybe, maybe they'll settle it, you know. It's the Chowan Valley. Yeah. Yes, I remember. And I can show you some of the pictures I can recollect. Yeah, and, and my, my wife, wife have a few, but I, I had a lot of people, you know, it's been so long, you know, and most of them got, uh, got missed it, got separated, then I got married and everything else, you know, I think. Yeah. Would you mind if I, if we could look at it? And yeah, well, you can. Uh, can you just tell me about it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Hey, Dory can bring the picture, babe. She said, she said in, in the sorry. bag, yeah. Thank you. Waddell and, and Jerry. They're the two, but that was taken on the hill that I was on. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, this is myself when this I was young, you know, yeah. It was in, that was up on the hill, too. That was outside the bunk I was just telling you about, mm -hmm. you know, with the, you know, that one. And how long did you spend there? On the hill? Oh, uh, we we uh, we stayed about. Let's see, then we got rotated off for a while. It, it stayed about about a, about a month and a half, you know. Then they put you back on the line for a while. To this is this is my sergeant. Uh, never forget his his name, Jerry. That, that was the sergeant. There's another two buddies uh, with two. So was it cold most of the time? You oh were yeah, there? right. It's cold. You see, see, how, see, the, see the hill and the uh, heavy weapon machine gun. Most of, most of these was taken right right outside the the, the, the hill that I was on uh, three five five. Okay. Yeah, that's myself on that one. Yeah. Here's, here's, here's another one too, Your buddy Jerry and all them, see, different. I was young, bro, I was young. How was Jerry to, uh, to they, they was all good. They was all good buddies, I tell you, you know. We got all good buddies. And most of that was just taking the same time on that same place. I think. That was the 101st Division when I first got drafted, you know. That was, that was in Kentucky. This was in Kentucky? Yeah, right. Uh -huh. most, most of these was in, in Korea. Uh, 
No, that was in Korea too. Yeah. This was, this was in front of the hill, the hill I was on too. Picture. So you, when you were on that, were you all yeah, high? Everything was taken for high ground. Okay. You know, they were fighting for high ground. You ever hear pork chops, old Baldy? No, all those was like, old Baldy was an outpost. They was out, out from the regular army, like, you know. Could you see the enemy running up? But were they, did they do like a lot of sneak Oh, oh you, you could see it, especially, China, especially back in them days, you know. All you do is throw up a flare and see what, what's in front of you, you know, at night. Yeah. So most battles place at night? Yeah, right. Most, most of your battles are at night. Then if you hear some, you know, if somebody don't know the password, you have a different password every night, you know. So if you hear any noise or thing or what you do, you shoot up a flare and it gives you light to see what's in the bottom of the hill. I got to fix this money. Okay. Uh, Can you just speak about that again? Um, how you fought and you're on the high ground? Just what you just said, would you mind just redoing that just so that way we can get good audio? Oh, oh, oh yeah, we were like, like high ground, you're fighting for high ground, you know. And uh, the one that has the higher uh, uh, ground, you know, they, 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 they fight for that, that hill itself, you know. So that, that's the way most of them was getting killed like that. Then one thing about it, you have a, like a, a forward, thing for, for, like artillery coming in on you, you know, have like a forward observer, and, and they can tell, you know, if they spot anything, they can see where the artillery will go, you know. It's a experiment. Over the years, you forget, you forget a lot over the years, you know. But it's still within you. And that was, that was taken down in Breckenridge, too. Breaking Ridge, Kentucky, that was in Korea. No, that was in Japan. Oh, wow. Sasebo, Japan. I had a, quite a few of them man. I was taken in Korea, but over the years I got lost, you yeah. know. Well, one thing about it, I thank God, you know, for bringing me back. And, uh, I promised the Lord everything, boy, when, when, when I was over there. But when I came back, I was back in the world again, you know. Back, and back in the world. I was in the world until I met my wife, you know. And that's why I became a Christian, you know. Did she? Yeah, yeah right, yeah. They help me. They always give you a good help me. You know? Do you have any children? Oh, yeah, I have two. Mm -hmm. I have a... I, I, my my first one, he he died at twenty seven, but my daughter, she she was still living, and uh, I got two grandkids, you know, and one they both of both of them in college, and they were. Is, is one the one that just walked in? Oh yeah, Jorday, Jorday Johnson. Oh yeah, she's she's a, she's a boy. She's a <laughs> she's a blessing, you know, right there. She's been over in Africa and all them places. She's a good Christian too, you know. You just keep praying for him, you know. Yeah, Jordan. Real nice. And my uh, grandson, he's over in uh, up in West Virginia, going to West Virginia State. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's good that you know how they turn out, boy. You know, but but today, boy, see them turn out. You know, you know that you live for something. You know. Really something. Jordan is a good kid, boy. I really is. I know. I've been knowing them. I've known them ever since they were born. You know. They uh they give you they give you life. You know, really do. Real life. Well, if it wasn't for your service, we wouldn't have the opportunity. <laughs> it's to happy to see them grow up. You know, they always be with you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate that you. Oh yeah, it was nice. I wish I could. Traffic and yeah, I know. I wish I could uh, have more to give you. You know. Oh, you've given me. Huh? Um, I'm just gonna. We're just gonna take some footage of you these wanna, photos. Wanna, yeah. Okay. You can take. You can pick the ones out you want to take. Okay. Yeah. And then I'll. Oh, wow. uh, 
we were part of the Third Army. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does each army have a different? Or yeah, each different one, pattern? yeah, but this, this pattern. Yeah, that's the one I was with the third, the third division. Wow. Mm -hmm. What they call it, cotton bales. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're real cotton bales. Yeah. How are you going to do this? I turn on two boards. And what we're going to do is we're going to send your interview to the um, Library of Congress. Yeah. Okay. Put them in our archive, and then okay. we're also going to then um, edit it and take it. What well, your career is a forgotten war, you know that. And all of that right now is. Uh, That? You were also in a ship too. Oh yeah, right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Did you right. Fly? Uh, and everything else on the ships. Oh, okay. That's Korean soldier. I still have my government insurance. The camera people to do it. Oh, yeah. So we said, well, we jumped at the opportunity. Right, okay, right. And we also are all interested in history and in the wars. And, you know, it's just a privilege for us to even get the chance to speak with you. So thank you so much right, for taking okay. time out and coming down here right, was, and fighting traffic. <laughs> it was a struggle when we stayed on tra <laughs> traffic so long. It waited about almost uh, over an hour for the bus. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming again. What is she doing?